call to worship. Come sing a new song of worship. Come sing a new song of praise. Today is a day of promise fulfilled. With joy, we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost, a day when power and comfort flowed. Pentecost, a day of hope and inspiration. A day when the Holy Spirit was revealed in flaming glory and the glory was given to the people. The fire of the Holy Spirit lives on in us. Sing praises. We sing praises indeed. Our prayer of praise and adoration. Come Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the breath of life, Come Holy Spirit, our advocate, our counselor. Come Holy Spirit, teacher of wisdom, reminder of Christ. Come Holy Spirit, grantor of forgiveness, giver of peace. Come Holy Spirit, may we feel God breathing through our worship. May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. As we sing our opening hymn, you'll note that there's new words to a familiar tune to some, Go to the World. call to confession. We've gathered together in the presence of God to offer our praise and our prayers. We come before God with confidence, knowing that even when we can't find the words, God's own spirit is right here with us, praying in us and for us, giving shape to our wordless hopes and longings and pleading for us before the throne of grace. So let's come with joy to offer our confessions to God who knows all and who loves us all. Please pray with me. Spirit of holiness, we confess 
that we often fail to catch the wind as it blows through our hearts. When you seek to ignite us, we quench the fire of your love and dissipate the power of your presence. You long to restore us to the image of God, but we let it tarnish us as we nurse selfish attitudes. You nurture unity, but we sow discord. You come to make our bodies your holy temples, but we misuse them. We allow the value systems of our society to separate us from your good intentions for us as we use our gifts for our own benefit. Forgive us, merciful spirit. Burn away our impurities and forge us into renewed and useful instruments in your service. Amen. assurance of pardon. God's very being is grace. God's every intent is to welcome you home. So receive God's forgiveness and rest in God's love. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Alleluia and amen. Our prayer for illumination. O oh God, send forth your Holy Spirit into my heart that I may proceed into my mind that I may remember and into my soul that I may meditate. Inspire me to speak with piety, tenderness, and mercy. Teach, guide, and direct my thoughts and senses from beginning to end. May your grace ever help and correct me, and may I be strengthened now with wisdom from on high for the sake of your infinite mercy. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord upon many waters. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and the strips of the forest bare. And in God's temple all cry, Glory. When you send forth your Spirit, all living things are created. And you renew the face of the earth. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. I baptize you with water, but one with more powerful than I is coming, who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. May the Lord give strength to the people. May the Lord bless the people with peace. In 1926, a very wealthy man from Toronto, a lawyer by the name of Charles Vance Miller, he died and he left behind a will that was very confusing and almost amusing to the residents in his Canadian province. Miller was a bachelor and he had a wicked sense of humor. He stated clearly in his last will and testament that it was going to be an uncommon and capricious document. Because he had no close heirs to inherit his fortune, he divided his money and his property 
in ways that amused him and aggravated his newly chosen heirs. So here's just a few examples of his strange bequests. He left shares to the Ontario Jockey Club to two prominent men who were well known in their opposition to racetrack betting. He bequeathed shares in the O'Keefe Brewery Company, a Catholic beer manufacturer, to every Protestant minister in Toronto. <laughs> but his bequest that left the bulk of his fortune was to a, the Toronto woman who gave birth to the most children in the 10 years after his death. This clause in his will caught the public imagination. The country was entering the Great Depression and people struggled to meet even the most basic economic responsibilities. So the prospect of an enormous windfall was quite naturally alluring. Newspaper recorders scoured public records to find likely contenders for what became known as the Great Stork Derby. Nationwide excitement over the Great Stork Derby built quickly. In 1936, four mothers, proud producers of nine children in 10 years, divided up Charles Miller's bequest and each one of them received a staggering sum of $125,000. Charles Miller caused much mischief with his will, and it was his final legacy to humanity. When Jesus of Nazareth left this earth, he bequeathed a very different kind of legacy to his followers. He left his Holy Spirit to comfort, to guide, to empower them to be all that God called them to be. And today we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit on the church. After the crucifixion, the disciples had been afraid for their lives and they locked the door of the upper room when they were there together. Now they were afraid no longer. The coming of the Holy Spirit transformed disciples from fear to confidence. And the Holy Spirit gave them courage to go out into Jerusalem and to declare the resurrection of Jesus to a city whose people had so recently called for his death. The Peter we read about in the book of Acts seems like a very different Peter from the Gospels. The Holy Spirit has refined and honed the good qualities and pared away the bad. The courage to speak out, for example, remained, but the words spoken were no longer impetuous and without thought, but cogent and considered and wise. But he was still Peter, the Holy Spirit had not destroyed his essential self, but replaced it with something new. His basic personality remained the same, but it had been refined and strengthened. And so it became, he became closer to God, what God wanted him to be, but also what he himself wanted to be. Peter's undoubted courage was demonstrated on several times in the gospels. But while Peter trusted in his own strength, it inevitably let him down at a crucial time and it led him to deny Jesus. The same courage strengthened by the Holy Spirit became infinitely dependable and sure. And God's Holy Spirit would be poured on all who believed. The Holy Spirit does not invade us, but if we truly wish to receive it, it is there for each one of us who does the asking. And if we truly want the Holy Spirit to enter our lives, it will be because we want change and will welcome the changes that the Holy Spirit will bring. It will also mean that we will have recognized our inability to bring about these changes on our own and have realized our own need for God's grace. If the Holy Spirit had not come upon those apostles at Pentecost, it's probable that Christianity would not have spread as far. Those who had known Jesus and followed him would have held on to their belief, certainly for a little while, maybe to the end of their lives. At best, Christianity might have lingered on as a small subsect of Judaism, which itself was a minority religion and not actively seeking converts. Possibly in time, Christianity would have merged back into mainstream Judaism. Today, we live in a country where religious observance is a minority activity. Many churches are experiencing falling congregations. Those who make up congregations are growing older and not being replaced by younger members. The population of, this, of our country is growing, but churches are closing. 
Unless we can reverse this trend, we may reach a situation when the faith will simply die out as we know it. Erasmus, the famous Renaissance scholar, once told a classic story which was designed to emphasize how important it is that we take up the torch of Christ's ministry with great commitment. In the story, Jesus returns to heaven after his time on earth, and the angels, they gather around him to learn all that happened during his days on earth. And Jesus tells them of the miracles, his teaching, his death on the cross, his resurrection. And when he finishes the story, Michael the archangel asks Jesus, but what happens now? And Jesus answers, I have left behind 11 faithful disciples and a handful of men and women who have faithfully followed me. They'll declare my message and they'll express my love. And these faithful people, they will build my church. But, responds the angel, what if these people fail? What then is your other plan? And Jesus answers, I have no other plan. As the body of Christ, we, like the apostles, are charged with the duty of preaching the gospel. It's up to us to bring to today's world this wonderful, glorious gospel of love and salvation and redemption that has sustained and comforted people and challenged them for 2,000 years. Jesus is counting on you and me. We are God's plan. And the good news is that we're not alone. The Holy Spirit is here to melt us and mold us and fill us and use us. At Pentecost, nearly 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit gave the disciples the ability to speak in the language their listeners needed to hear and understand. I don't know if this was literally the ability to speak in different languages or whether the Holy Spirit was powerful in them that the need for language was transcended, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak directly to them. But we need to ask the Holy Spirit to help us find this language. We have a message to deliver, and it's quite literally a life or death message. But for some reason, we don't seem to be very effective in delivering it. We need to find the language that will speak to people today, that will reach out and touch their lives and touch their hearts. We need to do this both as individuals and collectively as a church. If we try to do this in our own strength, then almost certainly we will get it wrong. We may try to hold on to things we ought to change or change things that we ought to hold on to. We may be tempted to tell people what we think they want to hear rather than what God knows they need to hear. If we trust in God and let his Holy Spirit guide us, we will be able to give God's unchanging, eternal message of love in a way that is new and fresh. Jesus did not tell his disciples that they would not have problems. In fact, their problems probably dwarf many of our own. What he did promise was peace of mind. He would send them the gift of the Holy Spirit to give them courage and comfort. They would be warriors and not worriers. And that is the same promise that Christ gives us today. Amen. Our response hymn is Pentecost has, has Come. It's to the tune of a Latin American song called Song of Hope. And you may be familiar with the tune.
today is two parts. First, we have our offering to our local church. And I think we have uh, Greg and Jill down there and you can um, uh, leave your special offerings there. But we also note that today is Pentecost Sunday. And the Pentecost offering is one of four annual special offerings. The church-wide special offerings of the Presbyterian Church USA play an important part in defining what it means to be a connectional church in the 21st century, bringing together the diversity of the Presbyterian Church USA to focus and take faith-based action on shared concerns. The offerings offer opportunities for partnership, learning and witness and profoundly affect the life of the church as a collective witness to Jesus Christ's love for the whole church. You have a special envelope that you can use for your special Pentecost donation. Uh, and you can leave that in the same offering plate as a regular offering. God of all people, stir in us a commitment to help shape the lives of our children, youth, and young adults especially those who are marginalized due to the color of their skin. Help us to make sure all have opportunities to thrive and be exactly who you call them to be. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me in prayer. The Holy Spirit embodies the life force and the power of God, the animating energy present in all things and captured by none. On Pentecost, we celebrate the coming of the Spirit of God, and I invite you to pray with me. God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit bring fire to the earth so that the presence of God may be seen in a new light, in new places, in new ways. May our own hearts burst into flame so that no obstacle, no matter how great, ever obscures the message of the God within each of us. May we come to trust the word of God in our heart, to speak it with courage, to follow it faithfully, and to fan in, into flame in others. May the Jesus who filled the women with his Holy Spirit fill the world and the church with new respect for each and every person. Give me, great God, a sense of the breath of the Spirit within me. And Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for places where there seems to be no peace or where peace is fragile. We pray for the places in our world that need health, the places within our bodies that need health, the places within our lives and our minds that need health. And God, we pray that you would send your spirit to help us find wholeness and healing. And God, we pray that we would be your disciples, energized by your spirit, able to speak your word, your word boldly and go into all the world to share the good news of hope and joy and new life. And we pray as you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is Faithful God, You Send Your Spirit. Again, these are new words to a familiar tune.
you'll join me on the bold for our benediction. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Give us a vision for a new day. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Give us a mission for this day. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Help us to heal a broken world. And now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.